that when Jesus preached to the woman at the well, God gave him a word that unlocked her heart. And every one of you has a word from heaven to unlock hearts around you. But we just have to step out beyond the voice of the enemy saying you're not qualified, you're not anointed enough, you don't know the word enough. But all we need to know is that he loves them and that when we step out in faith that he'll fill our mouth. If we open up our mouth, he will fill it. There were two girls standing on the, the corner of the road, one wearing high heels with blonde hair. The other girl um, had long black hair. They're both smoking, low cut shirt, and they're just, they're in a deep conversation and I walked by. And there were two voices that spoke to me and every one of us has two voices. The first voice said, don't talk to them. They're gonna cuss you out. They're not open at all. The second voice said, they need to hear the good news. They need to know why God loves them. And so I've been doing evangelism for, for a while to know and recognize God's voice over the enemy's voice. Because how many know that it says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he's actually given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And so I pressed beyond that that voice that said, don't, don't cross that line. Don't talk to them. They're going to cuss you out. Um, and I just literally interrupted them. Something in me was compelling me to talk to them. And I just said, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to bless you with this. And I gave them a little box of chocolates. And both girls kind of shrieled. And they're like, oh my goodness, that's so sweet. So the, the girl with the black hair said, it's my birthday today. And why would you do something like that? Why would you give us a little chocolate? And I said, I'm a Christian and Jesus lives in me and he loves you. And something inside me told me to, to stop and talk to you. And the, and the girl said, right away when I said that as a Christian, I'm balling up. And it's because she's never actually encountered the Jesus that I know. And she said, and she started swearing and she said, you know, people can believe what they blankety want to believe and I'll believe what I blankety want to believe. And, and that's that. But how many know that the greater one lives on the inside of us and that the anointing destroys the yoke? We just have to step out in faith. And so I said, but could I, could I pray a birthday blessing over you guys today? And to my surprise, God opened the door and I ended up holding their hands and starting to pray. And I started to pray for the birthday girl first. And as soon as I started to pray for her, God started giving me words that I felt like were words of knowledge for her. And how many know it's easy to give words in church? I think it's the best place to practice words of knowledge and, and giving words and prophesying. But how many know when you share a word on the streets, they'll tell you the truth if it's real. They'll tell you because there's nothing in it for them. So I shared the word. I, I felt like there are many things that the Holy Spirit will give you that have nothing to do with you. You might not even remember what you said, but I just shared about um, my belief that that some people really close to you have betrayed you and you're a fighter. And I started sharing some things and, and then after I prayed, that's when I noticed that God had opened her heart with a word of knowledge. And so she said, you have no idea how much this means to me. It's my birthday and I believe I'll never forget this encounter. She said, it's the word she used as she swore. And she said, everything you said was, was blankety bang on, everything you said. And so I looked at her, that her other friend, the blonde girl, and I, I prayed for her and gave her a word. And, and she said, you know, everything you said to me was accurate. You talked about schooling and all these things. And she said, the blonde girl said, I actually feel something right now. I feel something. It's because we carry something. And the enemy is afraid of us carrying it out of these four walls. And she said, I actually believe in signs and wonders. And I believe that this is a sign to me today. Both of those girls gave me their number. They texted me that night. And um, I have plans to go for coffee with the blonde girl next weekend. And it was so powerful. And I, I felt to share that testimony because, because God needs us to prophesy to the world. God needs us to declare in the darkness what God is doing. God has called us to call his sons and his lost sons and daughters to come home. The Bible says he's given us the ministry of reconciliation, telling the world God's not mad at you. They haven't encountered God, but God wants to encounter them through you. And so I wanted to just, um, just share two practical things that I believe 
Because Jesus said, we're the light of the world, not the evangelist, not the pastor, but you are the light of the world. And he said, in Matthew 5, Jesus said, you're a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works and glorify your father. And he said, you are salt and light, but if salt loses its saltiness, it's, it's meant to be thrown out and trampled on by men. And my heart was just like, reminded that you are the light of the world. And so I just want to end with this scripture, Matthew 5, 12, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, its purpose, how can it be made salty? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Your, your lives light up the world, for how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? Verse 16, so don't hide your light, let it shine brightly before others, so that your commendable works will shine as light among them, and they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. The message translation says, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors in the earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. But Jesus says, let your light shine. And so I just bless you guys as you go out, that we would shine bright and take the basket off and shine because the greater one lives on the inside of you and he's given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And I just pray that as you go, that you'd walk in that light and shine that light as a living river because your father is for you and he loves to dwell in you and you actually bring an encounter of the resurrected king that's cool just thank you and I, I i was sitting in this conference and i was listening to an evangelist who was going out doing this stuff and um i was convicted i was like wow i rarely share the gospel with anyone i really do um, and I, I wanted to, and most, I, I, like I think this is true for most of us, that as Christians, we know we're meant to be salt, we're meant to be light, but we're, we're terrified in doing that. And at the end of his message, he said, I want to pray for courage for people to be able to actually go out and, and be salt and light in the world. And I, I stood up and I responded to this, and um, he invited us to come forward, um, and then he laid hands on us. And as he was praying for me, he said, I'm going to impart courage. But he said, here's the thing. Most of you aren't going to feel any different at all. Because the very definition and the very nature of courage is it causes you to overcome fear. So it's not the fear that's going to go away, but it's your ability to push past it that is. Okay. Who wants courage? Please stand. Lynn's going to pray for you. Oh, hang on. Please sit down if you're not going to use it. No, I'm serious. Please sit down if you're not going to use it. Yeah. In Acts 4.29, it's biblical to pray for more boldness. They sat in the upper room. They didn't sit there to just only worship Jesus. They sat in the upper room to be filled and to go. And they prayed this one prayer in Acts 4.29. They said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold the threatenings of the enemy that have spoken against the church. But, but we pray, God, that you would grant us, your servants, boldness. So I'm going to pray that over every one of you. And it looks different on every different personality. It's not about looking like a certain personality, but it's actually the Holy Ghost flowing through you. Because you can reach people that find our can't. You can reach people that are in the darkness. So God, I just thank you, Lord, that when they prayed over 2,000 and 24 years ago, they prayed and they stood in the upper room and they said, God, consider what the world is saying against us, but we ask that we would, you would grant us your servants boldness to speak your word. So God, I pray right now over every one of these believers, they're so hungry to love you, God, and love you well. And it looks like something. It looks like shining the light. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare boldness over every one of us, including me, God. Make us better witnesses for you. Because like you said, it's why we're here. So God, I just declare 
each person standing boldness to speak your word and that signs and that wonders that words that like Jesus spoke and changed the whole city I believe there's words in here today that will change a whole region a whole nation so God I pray that your Holy Spirit would unleash boldness and signs and wonders on a greater level today and it's by faith it's how we walk it's how we live when the enemy tries to draw a line in the sand this week or even today don't talk to that person like he did to me that they would step beyond that line and go i'm going to share because he he did something in my life and he's worthy he's the resurrected king that walks with you everywhere that you go so i thank you for boldness over every person and an insatiable desire to be light and salt and we give you all the glory jesus amen <laughs>